Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the differences between DNA and RNA. So let's talk about some basic things real fast. Uh, many of you might know this already, but inside the cell, where is DNA located? Of course, DNA is going to be located in the nucleus of the cell. Now the question is, where is RNA located? RNA is going to be located in the cytoplasm, that area still obviously within the cell, but not inside the nucleus. So those are some real basic things, right? If, you, if your cells have a nucleus, then of course your DNA is going to be in the nucleus of that cell. So all of your cells with nuclei have your DNA, and of course you've got one uh, distinct uh, DNA for your body, obviously different from everybody else's DNA. Um, so that's, that's a key thing to remember there, uh, cells without nuclei would not have, obviously, DNA. Um, now, something else to talk about now, what is DNA exactly? A lot of people obviously are familiar with DNA. We know we do DNA testing because it's very specific. You know, we know if it's you, right, your DNA, or somebody else's, right? There's kind of like no in-between. Um, so it's very good for testing. It's easy to extract DNA because we all we need is cells, right? You find somebody's hair. Obviously, there's cells there and they can extract DNA. Uh, skin cells, you know, they can do a swab on the inside of the mouth and get skin cells. You know, people leave their DNA at crime scenes all the time, whether they realize it or not. Um, so it's, it, it's, it's fantastic that we have, you know, the technology to be able to uh, analyze DNA. Uh, but the differences between DNA and RNA are, are pretty vast. Now, we'll say one other thing real quick about DNA and RNA from the chemistry standpoint, they are nucleic acids. And that is something that we should point out. I ask a lot of students, you know, what, you know, mo uh, molecular categories DNA and RNA in, you know, what type of macromolecule are they? And a lot of students say proteins, carbohydrates, they guess a lot of things, but no, they are nucleic acids, right? DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, okay? RNA stands for ribonucleic acid, so they're both nucleic acids, and this is the key thing. What are the building blocks of nucleic acids? What are the building blocks of DNA and RNA? Well, the building blocks are going to be the nucleotide, okay? Nucleotides or tied, however you want to put it, right? Plural, because there's going to be lots of them. They are the building blocks of nucleic acids, which means when we look at DNA or RNA, we're going to see long chains of nucleotides. Now, real quick, because this is all similar with DNA and RNA, what's a nucleotide? Okay, because we're going to, again, when we look at DNA, we're going to see long chains of these nucleotides. Well, a nucleotide's pretty simple. It's, it's three basic things. Okay, it is a sugar. In DNA's case, it's deoxyribose. Uh, and in RNA's case, it's just ribose. Okay, but, but it, it is gonna be a sugar. It's gonna be a phosphate. If I can spell that here. There we go. It's gonna be a phosphate. And it's gonna be a nitrogenous base. Those three things, okay, make up each nucleotide, okay? We will always see with a nucleotide, sugar, phosphate, nitrogenous base. Another example is ATP is a nucleotide. If we look at the, the, the structure of ATP, which of course is your energy molecule for your body, we'll, we'll see a sugar, a phosphate, and we'll still see a nitrogenous base. Cyclic AMP, if you're familiar, familiar with that, um, it's the second messenger in the body. It too is a nucleotide, so it will have sugar, a phosphate, and a nitrogenous base. That's the key thing about nucleic acids, um, is that they are polymers, right? They have repeating subunits of nucleotides, okay? So let's go over some of the differences. Those are the similarities, right, that DNA and RNA have, but what are some of the differences? <clears throat> We're gonna put a little chart here together, talk about some of the differences. Um, one other thing I will say, um, though is, and we'll kind of just say this as we're writing our little chart out, is, you know, what is DNA? That's kind of where I was going with this anyways, is what is DNA? DNA, most people will say, is your genes, which is true. So what are your genes? 
You know, gene, DNA contains all these specific genes, which are instructions for your body. So think of DNA as the instruction code, right? Or instruction manual for your body. How many genes do we have? They say, the current textbook that I teach from says about 20,000 genes. Now I'll tell you that number has changed uh, with different textbooks in different years that they write these textbooks. But 20,000 genes is kind of what they're saying now. So DNA is basically our instruction manual. What is RNA then? Well, RNA is basically going to read those instructions. So if you had an instruction manual, that's DNA. Then you have to obviously, you know, hold the manual and read it. Well, that's, I guess you'd say the guy reading it is RNA. RNA is reading the manual, right? And then we'll talk about proteins, where proteins kind of play into all this. Proteins um, are going to carry out the instructions given by RNA. So DNA is the instructions, RNA is reading them and then telling the proteins to carry them out. Okay, and that's kind of the sequence of how things work in the body. Um, another thing we can say before we go over the differences here, um, one of the other things that we can say is that when our bodies basically produce, take DNA molecule and produce RNA, okay, and specifically it will produce an mRNA, a messenger RNA, when our bodies do that, uh, we refer to that process as transcription. And transcription occurs in the nucleus of the cell. Okay? You know, from day one, when we when conception takes place and we begin essentially our life, transcription, um, the, you know, the DNA is produced, and then from the DNA we we we, we do transcription to make our messenger RNA. Okay, and then where do the proteins come in? Well, the proteins are produced using the messenger RNA and some other things like the transfer RNA and ribosomes. The proteins are produced, which we said carry out the instructions, and that process is referred to as translation. And translation occurs in the cytoplasm of the cell. So when we talk about, you know, what DNA does and RNA does and what the proteins do, it's all interconnected and all interrelated. They all work together for a common purpose, which is basically taking instructions and then carrying them out inside the body so everything works right. And again, there's your two processes. Transcription would obviously have to come first. Translation would have to come second. Both occurring inside the cell, one in the nucleus, one in the cytoplasm. Okay. So, just mention that, but let's get into the differences finally here, okay? So, differences between DNA and RNA. Well, well, one big difference is the two different types of sugars. So, DNA is going to have the deoxyribose sugar, whereas RNA has the ribose sugar. So, we see differences in the type of sugar, okay, for the two. What's another difference? Well, a big difference is the nitrogenous bases. So the nitrogenous, we'll abbreviate here, bases are different. So adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine are the nitrogenous bases for DNA. The rule here is that adenine and thymine always pair together. Cytosine and guanine always pair together. So when we look at a DNA chain, it's just that it's a double chain, or what they refer to as a double helix. We'll have a chain one, and we'll have a chain two. Each chain links to each other using hydrogen bonds, and how will they link? They link specifically not by, remember they're chains of nucleotides. They are not gonna link by the sugar, they're not going to link together by the phosphate. They're going to link together by the nitrogenous base. So the adenine on one chain will link to the thymine, or vice versa. And the cytosine will link to the guanine, or vice versa. So that's how the two chains of DNA link together. And when we look at a chain of DNA, we will, again, like I said, always see these four bases. You know, they'll be in random order, 
but it'll be adenine, thymine, cytosine, guanine. We will always see those, nothing else, okay? And that comes to a second point that I'll go ahead and put right here is that DNA is two chains, right? So what's RNA, RNA gonna be over here? It is one chain. So I'll just mention that while my mind's on it. RNA is gonna be one chain, and what are the bases for that chain gonna be in RNA? RNA is going to be adenine, uracil, cytosine, and guanine. So adenine, uracil, cytosine, guanine. So what's different? The thymine is replaced for uracil. So when we look at an RNA chain, by the way, it's only one chain. When we look at an RNA chain, we expect to see adenines, uracils, cytosines, guanines. That uracil here is going to tell us, hey, we're looking at an RNA chain. Again, it's a single chain. Um, how does pairing work with RNA? Well, keep in mind, RNA is only one chain, so it doesn't pair with itself. But what does it do? It is produced from a DNA chain. So when we make DNA chain, I'm just going to make something up here. When we make a DNA chain, and it is used to make the RNA chain, that's where we will use our A and it will connect with a U. Our T will connect with an A. A with a U, C with a G, G with a C, and then A with a U. So we create an RNA chain like this. And it has specifically, like we said, the four bases, A's, U's, C's, and G's. Okay, so adenine, uracil, cytosine, and guanine. So keep that in mind. The bases are going to be different for RNA versus DNA. One chain versus two, and we refer to the DNA chain as, I'll put it here, double helix, which means it's a double chain that is twisted. It's twisted like a staircase. So I'm drawing it straight here because I really can't draw it three-dimensionally, but picture there would be a twisted appearance, right? A coiled or twisted staircase type appearance to the DNA structure. <clears throat> uh, another thing is the chains are longer. So this is a much longer chain versus shorter. Okay? So the actual length of nucleotides is much longer in DNA uh, versus RNA. <clears throat> so that's another note of uh, uh, Big difference. Like we said, DNA contains your genes, which are your instructions, and this basically reads the instructions. You know, there's fancy terms like codes, you know, or encodes the genes, different things like that, but really it's reading the instructions, okay? So a big difference there between the two. Um, and those really, what's, we got one, two, three, four, five thing, that right there is big differences uh, between DNA and RNA. Uh, I hope that helps. We're going to go into more detail down the road here, so look for more videos on transcription and translation, and also things like DNA replication and things like that, so watch for that. But for now, I hope that helps. Good luck and good studying.